Hey, good Thursday morning to everybody. Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here. Friday's another day. We need you to stay weather aware for potentially some severe storms. Now, this system is some ways like Tuesday, but in other ways completely different. And we'll get into that as I talk in my vlog today. It's an interesting setup because some of the parameters just aren't as foolproof or as 100% sure as Tuesday's system. You can barely tell the system developing right now. It's right basically in the middle of the country. But when we turn on the severe weather outlook today, you're going to see real quickly where this risk is. It's going to be in the middle of the country right there. Uh, we have the, I'm going to put the probability of tornadoes on here in a second, but we'll put the uh, severe weather risk first. But it's right here that we're watching for that risk of severe storms today. You can see the low, medium, and even higher risk there already ahead of the system. So this will develop throughout the day. And then this will shift off to the east as we go into tomorrow. So I'll put tomorrow's uh, severe weather outlook out. And you can see not a lot of change from yesterday. We're still generally in that low to medium in this little narrow stretch of high, which could come up to the Charlotte area. There's The biggest uncertainty is how far north that this severe weather risk comes. I do think eventually towards Raleigh, we're probably going to see a better chance. But back here in the Western Carolinas, there's still a little bit of a question mark. This is going to be one of those events where it could be pretty bad storms or it could end up being nothing. Um, I'm just going to put it out there because it's that real tight threshold of getting some instability in here. But there's so much wind energy, again, with this system, it only takes a little bit of storm fuel to get things to go crazy. So this is the overall risk of severe weather. We can break this down by categories. Now that we're day two, I'll go probabilistic for tornadoes. So the chance of tornadoes in our area, green is 2%, brown is 5%, and the yellow is the 10% chance. So obviously that 10% chance, I know it was, well, that seems low, but this is a chance of a tornado, not a chance of rain, okay? There's a big difference in probabilities between getting a little wet and your home being hit by a tornado. That's a big, big difference. So uh, treat these, are, these are pretty high. Once you get five, 10%, that's significant. And this is a significant area to watch. Probability of hail, very little. That's, you know, two, uh, five to 10%. Hail's not a big issue. Wind though, this is the wind probability. It's actually higher um, than the tornado risk. So you see uh, the 15, uh, the 10, excuse me, the five, the 15 and the 30. So the 30% chance is in there. And again, there's a hatched area in here as well, not showing up here, but that means there's a significant risk of strong tornadoes that do develop. I really think the corridor that I'm watching, the Midlands of South Carolina up into this area right in here does potentially have um, some pretty strong indications of tornadoes because when the low pressure tilts like this, that makes the wind shear, the backing of the winds, that's unfortunately a pretty good setup or bad setup uh, in this case. Good for the atmosphere, bad for us for tornado development. So let's get right into the future cast. All right, let's dive head into this right now. Okay, this is the uh, 10 a.m. hour this after this morning, just, just a couple hours from now as I'm recording this. We'll go into the afternoon hours. I'll stop this at around 7 p.m. Eastern time. Notice the storm is just developing. So even where the severe weather risk is today and tonight, this area could be an overnight event. So folks in the middle of the country, that's that's always a tough one. There's the low developing and pushing east. I'll go to early tomorrow morning. So unlike our Tuesday system, we're actually going to start the day dry with this setup. High pressure, and it's going to be chilly. We're going to be wedged in initially, so it'll be cold early on. And that's why there's some uncertainty in how far north the severe weather gets. Because what you're looking at here, there's a warm front somewhere right in here trying to push north and you got to get along the warm front or into what we call the warm sector for there to be a severe weather risk the cold air is good it actually keeps away i know people i've said this in the last couple of days stop asking for warm weather in the winter it's not a good thing we can have that all spring all summer and all fall long you do not want it warm in the winter that causes problems and so we do not want the warm air to get up here because if it does then we're going to be into severe weather mode so you see that front just to our south so here we are noon on friday still probably dry but here comes some clouds i think the moisture starts to arrive late afternoon so i'll zoom in a little bit care uh, closer here and you can see here comes the first batches of rain two three o'clock in the afternoon probably mid-afternoon now the real question is where's that warm front that's going to be key it looks like it might be in here but there's some indications in the isobars it might be in there so depending where it is these cells here concern me because these could be supercells and then here's the main front so you got two threats this is threat number one supercells ahead of it 
And then the main line is threat number two that moves in. So here we are, three o'clock. We'll go to four o'clock. We're in the rain. Again, some of these could be supercells ahead of the main line because it looks like we're well into the warm air at this point. We go to four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock. Boy, that's when it looks like, yeah, we're certainly into the warm sector now. So in the evening hours, we're well into the, the bad weather here. I'll move my head down here for folks in eastern North Carolina. Um, we're well into the bad weather now. And then here comes the front right there. There's seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, and then it's getting out of here. So I'll back that up real quickly just to put the timing. Again, look at the time. It's right up here. Every location is on the map. So uh, I'll get a question. What about this location? They're all on the map. Everybody on this map is there, okay? You may not be labeled, but it's on the map. The time is up in the corner. There it is, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock. So the key part here is that instability or fuel for storms. Let's quickly look at that. So we'll jump back and look at the thunderstorm fuel. That's the product you're looking at here. And again, you can see it surging up ahead of the system. Notice the Carolinas, none currently, as we go into 4 a.m. on Friday morning, we go 7 a.m., 8, 10, we go to noon, not much going on. Ooh, it's a saving grace. When is that warm air going to surge north? Here we are, 4 o'clock. Look, it's starting to surge up there. We get to 5, 6. Uh-oh. This is, this is what you watch for. And again, it's not going to take much, just a hint of it. And again, 7 o'clock ahead of that line. So you get the idea. The area of concern is going to be that area to the south for sure. You could see the, the Midlands of South Carolina are certainly going to be, and I think even up into here, but look how close to the Charlotte Metro this gets. That's why it's such a close call here that we're going to, that, that's a pretty big surge. So going into the evening hours, that's a whole bunch of fuel getting up here. A whole bunch for this time of year, that's crazy. Okay, let's talk about wind. Not as much wind as the last system. You could see the overall wind gust um, generally expecting I would say maybe up to 40, 45 mile per hour gusts. And again, a lot of this will be associated with the front and then behind it. So not nearly the kind of winds and the consistency of the winds that we had on Tuesday. Rainfall wise, much lower than Tuesday. But here's the thing, ground is saturated. If you get a line of storms, thunderstorms tend to overproduce rain. Anything close to an inch or above, if you see that in a localized area, could cause flash flooding. So it's a day we want you to stay weather aware. It's not gonna be nearly as bad as Tuesday but we'll have updates today. I'm waiting for every run of the, the new guidance to come in because this will be really an hour by hour thing as we kind of watch how far north that warm air can get into our area.